In this lesson, we're going to be applying the work that you've been doing so far. So you've been doing a lot of work on rates of change and estimating slopes. And we're going to do that with a couple of specific graphical models, mostly to do with distance or speed. So we can create graphs based on a description, um, usually to do with distance or speed. So we could have one that is distance and usually against time, right? So we could have a graph that does that. And we can also represent situations with a speed time graph. And I think often in the math textbooks, you'll see speed represented with an S, but in physics we use a V. So we can write a description for either of these graphs, and both of them would be described as there's an object or a person or whatever it is moving forward at an increasing velocity, right? So as time goes past, as time is going past, the speed is increasing. Okay, and if you were to look at some tangents, right, we have a nice low positive tangent value here for the slope, and then we're still positive as we get up here, and it's getting more positive, hence our velocity graph increases. We could also use this kind of graph to represent the flow of water. So if you're filling a container with water, maybe a fish tank, or I'm just simply talking about filling a beaker, depending on the shape of the con container will depend on the shape of your graph. So this axis here might be height or depth. And then this one would be time and as the depth changes maybe it's a constant at first and then changing in the second part of the graph right so it would all depend on the size and the shape of the container how it fills and again we can look at estimating tangents to look at the the rate of flow at any point during that graph and um, Lastly, talk a little bit more about the specifics of looking at rate of change on these things. So let's say we have a graph, and let's just use distance time. And you want to estimate an instantaneous flow rate, or an instantaneous uh, rate of change for the distance um, actually meant to put rate of change here not flow rate okay so we could we could use this to estimate right because we have used both algebraic and graphical ways to estimate tangents so we could estimate our slopes on here to get an instantaneous right so this would give us instantaneous And we can also use this, just like you did in the graphing section, to find an average flow rate, or average rate of change, whatever type it is, between two points using a secant. Right? So if we had a secant, we can use that to find the slope, which will give us the average rate of change.